We want to hear what Dwayne Scott Cierney's been finding up in my attic. What's in your attic? <laughs> Hey there, Dwayne Scott Suny. Hey, Amber. Wow, I had no idea that up in your attic you had vintage exploitation film posters. Did you know that? Um, know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and okay. kind of uh, so, so, so this week, uh, these are all these are all originals. There's no. I'm not showing you anything, any repros, and everything's real. And you will see in really bad taste. Take okay. It's Amber live. <laughs> anything can happen. So the first up one is Marijuana. I'm sure lots of people are familiar with this. This was from 1936, directed by Dwayne Esper. Uh, very similar to Reefer Madness. And when this was originally released, it was double billed with a film called How to Undress for Your Husband. <laughs> yes, adults <laughs> only. <laughs> well, it's going to get more adult than that. Next one up is called Teenage Mother. Oh. And this was also known as the hygiene story. This is from 1967. And it was uh, infamous for its narrator's ominous words, nine months of trouble. <laughs> Did you say 1967? 67, yeah. Oh, it's also fun about that. It starred a 15-year-old actress by the name of Arlene Sue Farber. <laughs> who's, who's, the quote from the film was, she did her homework in parked cars. <laughs> okay. Into the movies, I guess. Uh, so the again the exploitation films. So these are from nineteen twenties uh, through the seventies, and a lot of times these were made to be like kind of educational, but that was just a gimmick to get you in because really it was just to show you something provocative and well exploitative. Uh, next up is Child Child Bride of the Ozarks, uh, <laughs> nineteen thirty eight. Uh, though I think this is a later, this is the original poster, but this is a, a later print of one of their variations when they were promoting it. And this was um, uh, uh, infamous for its depiction of topless nude swimming and really, really bad acting. <laughs> Shotgun wedding. That's, those are the reviews of the time. <laughs> Next one is, okay, this is classic. Everybody knows this is probably one of the most famous exploitation films of all time. Chain for Life, starring the Hilton sisters. Uh, from 1952, these are really real conjoined twins, Violet and Daisy Hilton, um, and the film incorporated aspects of the twins' lives, including the marriage of one of them, which was a, a big scandal at the time. Um, and I found this little detail. So this was screened at the worst of the worst film festival, along with Plan 9 from Outer Space, which yeah. you've seen, Teenage Caveman, and wait for it, coming soon. Glenn or Glenda? Oh. Ooh. Okay, next up. Now, I want, I want you to see this because this is a peekaboo. This is a burlesque poster. But think about what I just uh, showed you. And look how it's how this is set up, uh, how it's designed, the graphics, the type style, the provocativeness of it. So this is where a burlesque poster kind of mimicking that exploitative no, no, nature of, of just film, um, which I just kind of found, found interesting. Now, what kind of theaters would show these? With what you know, the, the Cineplex or oh, really good question. These you no, know, these would often be be shown more like a, a VFW hall, really anywhere where you could, you could put a sheet up, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and that was kind of that kind of the gimmick of it. Sometimes they were used for fundraisers, um, and some of these movies made a lot of money because it was just filmed on a shoebox, and then you go to the next town and you and you show it. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about one, one, one more in the, coming up here. The next one is Mom and Dad. Now, Mom and Dad, I heard about this from a, a John Waters interview, so I had to track it down, and I found a copy of it. This is from 1945, and this is what I'm talking about. This film cost $67,000 to make, and it has grossed over $40 million bucks. <laughs> and Now, this is another one of these personal hygiene films about the dangers and, of pregnancy and VD. And my favorite thing about this is that these were often shown to two separate audiences where women would be allowed to come in, just women, and see this film you know, about childbirth, right, as, as presented as something educational. And often they had a nurse there just in case someone fainted. And invariably, someone who was given a buck fainted. <laughs> and then these wives would go home and say, hey, honey, 
the men's show is at nine o'clock or 10 o'clock. You should go see it. Well, of course, all the guys showed up because they thought it, they were going to see a dirty movie. <laughs> so that was how they marketed it, which is kind of oh, brilliant. Wow. And I don't know of any other film that's come out that would be just, just for women and, and just for men. The, the things you learn here on Amber Live, right? <laughs> I wonder if there are any people, any guys who um, presented themselves like me, uh, who went to the the women's show to. Uh... You know, you must be psychotic because <laughs> Russell, let it roll. <laughs> Glenn or Glenda, nineteen fifty three. This is you know this all starred Bella Lugosi as the doctor. You know, like you want this guy giving the exam, um, and this was a showcase to present. Um, a cross-dressing, transvestism, um, and quality made Angora sweaters. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. Uh, uh, who directed that one or who created that Glenda Glenda? Glenda Glenda. I don't have the director on the well, that was that was uh, Ed Wood. Ed Wood directed it. That's, that's, that's what I thought. But he didn't produce it. That's the one thing okay. he didn't produce. Oh my. Now have you seen any of these movies? Oh, I've seen all these movies. <laughs> But yeah, well, my collection, my collection. I like I collect exploitation films. So <laughs> no. I was gonna say, what VFW have you been to? <laughs> well, yes. I wear a sheet, I can go anywhere. Um, <laughs> all right, Dwayne Scott Sugi. Thank you very much thank for joining us. Yeah. Let's be, come back to my attic anytime. Off to Charles Bush. I can't wait. Yes, yes, yes. Me too. We'll bring it right now. Yes. So, bye-bye, Dwayne Scott Sione. What's in your attic? <laughs>